Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here, coming at you from the Knife Center, home edition. We're still home for the holidays, taking it a little bit easy, but that doesn't mean that we can't take a little time out to take a look at the coolest new knives that have just hit our shelves. So, let's check them out. All right, so it's going to be a little bit of a shorter episode today. We want to, like I said, keep things rolling a little bit here for ye old holidays. Uh, first thing I want to show you is a couple of exclusives. First off, this guy right here. New Protec SBR fixed blades that are just so, so cool. Two versions of it, in fact. We have the satin blade, which actually... Yeah, it's pretty satin. It's not, that's not quite a stone wash really going on there. Really cool looking. We also have a black bladed version here. I'm going to try to get some good light on this guy for you. Both of them feel really good in the hand. And this is where, you know, you guys know I'm a fixed blade. You guys know I like a good fixed blade over a lot of folders sometimes. And it's for reasons like this. You've got some really cool contouring going on with that handle. Not aggressive in this case, but just a really nice shape rounded over. Fills the hand quite well, I'd say. Kind of a three and a half finger grip for me personally, but the Knife Center exclusive orange and black G10 with the milled ridges feels fantastic. Uh, price for the black bladed version, we're about 240. And for the satin version, we are at 225. And as you can see as well, the hardware there on the handle matches the black or satin coating, depending on which version you go ahead and get. Really dig these guys. Blade length just under three inches, razor sharp. I mean, it feels really good. Fit and finish, world class right here, made in the USA. Gotta love that. Sheath for these guys is Kydex right there. Pretty good click into it. And you have actually Spyderco's J-Clip installed right out of the box. Uh, really handy. You can see you've got that J-style loop right there, which is gonna mean you can carry it either on your belt or inside the waistband. And that little J-hook on the other end is gonna keep it from, you know, keep it from sliding out too easily, I should say. These are available separately as well. And we'll, uh, we'll leave a link to those. Really nicely done, really cool fixed blades overall. This might be, even though we're not quite hit the new year just yet, this might be my first purchase of 2021, or what year is it, 2022. This might be my first, uh, first pickup. Really nice. Moving on, next we have a Boker Plus. This is a limited edition Quaken. Really cool, about 277 bucks. And Knife Center is the only retailer, only authorized retailer in the US uh, to be picked to carry this particular knife. Pretty cool thing. Worldwide, just limited to 200 pieces. So there's not a ton of these around. Um, and even fewer here in North America if you're in our particular market. Uh, but let me go over the specs. Three inch blade, M390 steel, Shines really nicely. You've got typical shape. Uh, this is one of the, uh, this is the Quaken compact size. So it's not the full size. It's also not the new Quaken Airs, which are technically a little more compact when they, uh, when they get narrower, but this is the full thick or full width profile in the compact size. Ball bearings in the pivot mean you can flip it open really, really well. You've got titanium on the back contoured with really cool milled titanium clip. You've got that pivot or the uh, the ball end there really nice touch and the handles copper infused marbled carbon fiber so so cool looks good very gentlemanly uh, in a classy sort of way even though this is not I think the Quaken Air is making even better gentlemanly option but these handles man they're so nice folds up really well but you've got a decent amount to hold on to because of the contouring and because of the full width nature of the uh, Quaken Compact. Flips great. Very, very cool. Again, don't sleep on them. 200 worldwide, even fewer here in the States, and you can only get them right here. So, moving on. Probably the 
Biggest news today, or at least the news you're probably seeing from a few different places right now, new Wii and Civivi have dropped officially today. Uh, so we've got a couple new models, a couple new uh, variants on some existing models, and we're going to start with one of those. Uh, we've got a couple new versions of the Baby Banter from Civivi. Really cool little knife. Uh, we now have a burgundy G10 option. Really like that color. Uh, we've also got the uh, OD green color with a matching or a gold thumb stud, and that coloration or that combination matches one of the full-size banter color options that is already out there. Uh, so pretty cool. Really like that burgundy though. Uh, 2.34 inches on the blade length, so you're under two and a half, uh, which three, three inches generally a, a good uh, safe bet for most places, but there are some places that are going to need that even shorter blade. Nitro V Steel, really good stuff. I'm excited to see this on more uh, budget or attainably priced offerings out there. Holds a nice edge. It's good and tough. It's kind of a derivation or a spinoff of something like AEBL, if you're familiar with that. Uh, pardon the alphabet soup, but one of my favorite stainlesses, and this is a very close cousin to it, so I like that. Uh, just under 60 bucks, just like the other versions. You've got three and a half finger grip, even on this knife, because you've got a uh, that finger choil right there that lets you choke up behind the blade. Just watch the uh, the back sharpened edge of the blade right there when you do that. Pocket clip, deep carry, and reversible. Very unobtrusive knife uh, when you're not wanting it to be seen. Liner lock, ball bearings in the pivot, no flipper, but really good thumb stud action, as you could just see demonstrated right there. Liners on this are pretty cool. It's not an inset liner, but you just have that single uh, liner on the one side for the liner lock, and just kind of a big mass of G10 on the front side. Plenty of strength. Uh, for that given the particular size of this knife. No problem whatsoever. Next up, something uh, folks have probably been really looking forward to for a little bit. Uh, we've seen a swap from the Wii Knife brand, which is Civivi's more premium uh, parent company. We've seen one of their models translated down into the Civivi range. And as you're going to see in a little bit, we see something very similar going the opposite direction. Uh, but I'm talking, of course, about the Synergy. Uh, the Synergy 2 was the Wii version, uh, which was kind of taking and updating the original Synergy, which is 20 plus years ago. Uh, the first CAD design integral folder on the market, then available, uh, that was the Synergy 1. We put out the Synergy 2, which was an integral titanium folder. Uh, no button lock like the original, but a ball bearing flipper. And you can get it in the original trailing point profile or this trailing point Tonto profile. Now we have the Synergy 3 for Civivi, which is a more attainably priced version. Uh, cheapest one uh, comes in about $93.50. This one right here is a little bit more expensive. It comes in about $131.75. So not a true, true budget version of these, at least just yet, but certainly a lot more affordable than the three to $400 versions, might even be some even more than that, on the Wii side of things. Now you don't get integral construction here. You get just standard uh, two scales on top of liners, something you see a lot uh, across Civivi's lineup, actually, I take that back. This particular one has an inset liner on this side for the liner lock and then no liner on the front side. Now you can get it with a G10 handle and a Nitro V blade, which comes in at that 93 plus change price point, or this version right here, which will try to get some good lighting on it. It is layers of G10 and carbon fiber interspersed. Looks really cool. With that, you get a Damascus blade, which in this case is going to be their uh, their 9CR-based Damascus, unless they've changed things up, but I uh, they haven't told us anything about that being the case. Really decent stuff. You've got uh, metallurgically 9CR is about 440C, so pretty good quality stuff for the price range. I mean, you're not going to get powder metallurgy, damascus steel. There are cool knives. The one thing you, uh, like I said, you don't get the integral construction, but you still do get some contouring to the handle. Maybe not quite as aggressive as the Wii versions, but still enough to create a very comfortable feel in the hand. It actually fills the hand pretty decently. It doesn't feel pinchy, doesn't feel thin at all. I dig that. The flipper, 
works with ball bearings, just like a lot of their stuff. So you can flip it open really nice. You know, you can get the two blade profiles, like I said, just the same. You got the trailing point or the trailing point Tonto right here. I'm really digging that Tonto, actually. It feels a little more, in this case, feels a little bit more utility driven to me than the standard trailing point. Uh, but the trailing point, of course, is going to be a fantastic slicer. This Tonto is going to be no slouch in that department either, however. All right, next up, new versions of the Appalachian, sorry, I said it wrong. And I hate when people say it that way. It's the Appalachian Drifter 2. Uh, new versions of it. Uh, you've got also that Nitro V blade steel making its way to this series. Uh, coming in, uh, this version right here is the least expensive of the three new ones. Uh, about 89 bucks. So only a few bucks less than the S35 VN versions uh, if they are in stock at the time you're looking for it. So not a huge savings in that regard, but still a very good steel. Purple G10 on this guy with the carbon fiber angled bolsters. Uh, you can also get it in a very uh, a dark green canvas micarta. It's approaching black. It's not super green, uh, but you get the, uh, the nice tactile feel of the micarta as opposed to kind of the smooth satin feel of this G10. You can also get it in a burgundy G10, which we showed you that on the baby banter there. And that one comes with a 9CR Damascus blade rather than the Nitro V. Really cool knives. Uh, not a, uh, this is not a non-locking knife like the uh, Rustic Gent, which it shares some, uh, some DNA with. Instead, you've got a deep carry pocket clip and you've got a liner lock with that front flipper or top flipper, however you want to say it. I like a, a top style front flipper because I can do them very easily. Uh, someone once asked me, like, why, what do I have against most front flippers? Why do I, am I not so hot or keen on them? It's because with my hand size and shape, sometimes I find them a little bit difficult. But when you've got that top style flipper right there, I almost never have a problem with those guys. They work really well. Blade length, just under three inches on this guy. Lockup is nice and solid. The ball bearing flipping action you saw is really good. You've got a nice keen hollow grind, very thin edge. Uh, behind the actual sharpened edge itself. Really excellent day-to-day -day cutter. Next up, uh, I'll spend just a brief little bit of time on these next two. Uh, we've got a new version of the Badlands Vagabond. You guys are probably tired of me uh, talking about this knife. I've talked about it a lot this year and a lot in the last two weeks. But you can now get it in a black blade with the black handle. Uh, and it's not a real heavy stone wash on this particular one. They're black stone washed uh, texture. Sometimes you get a little bit less, a little bit more. Uh, still 9CR stainless steel, so you know roughly 440C. Really cool blacked out nature. The only shiny bits are the edge itself and the actual Civivi pivot right there. Still 40 bucks. Still a fantastically designed knife. You guys know it's pretty much my favorite Civivi right now. Elegant shape, flips well, balanced extremely nicely, just fantastic EDC piece. Next up, we have a new version of the Odium as well in green micarta. And that is that dark green micarta I was talking about for the, uh, the Appalachian Drifter 2 earlier. Uh, this one, it's a little bit lighter than the, uh, the version of the Appalachian Drifter I pulled earlier. But as you can see, it's still fairly dark overall. It's not a, a light or brighter, uh, you don't really get bright green micarta, but you know what I mean. It's not a really light green color. A uh, couple bucks more than the G10 versions. And when I say that, I mean literally like two bucks more. Uh, 54.75 for this guy. 2.6-ish inch blade. Uh, D2, black stone wash finish on this guy as well. Liner lock, ball bearing. Flipper, relatively deep carry pocket clip, good action. And another knife, you know, similar to that baby banter from earlier. We've got a nice large finger choil up here. That's a bit of that Ferrum Forge DNA, of course, who is the, uh, the design firm behind this design. But you can get all four fingers on this guy. It's a little bit bigger than that baby banter. And as such, you've got a little bit more grip when doing that. But again, just watch the, uh, the back edge of the blade per usual. Really cool knives, uh, but next up, probably the thing that most of you guys have been waiting for, uh, because this is probably the knife that's in the thumbnail of this video, premium versions 
of the elementum. And this is a case exactly the opposite of that synergy from before. We've got a Civivi model jumping up to the more premium Wii lineup. If you've liked the design of the elementum up to this point, but wanted a truly premium version, now's the chance. Uh, 175 bucks, give or take, uh, depending on which model you get. You can get a Damascus blade coming up. Uh, I believe that's correct. You can also get it with just the 20 CV right here. And it's flat ground instead of hollow ground. I've got an original Civivi Elementum right here. You can see the difference uh, in the reflections right there. But same profile overall. It didn't change there. But so you got that same length, just under three inches, that 20 CV steel titanium handles. These are the bronze stone washed version, but again, a few different versions can be had right now. Plain stone wash, I think there's a blue as well. Frame lock as opposed to a liner lock. So you've got arguably a more stable locking system. Deep carry pocket clip, which is titanium right here as opposed to you know the standard painted steel of the base model. And also reversible pocket clip, which you don't get on the Civivi Elementum either. Flipping action, really nice. Feels a bit more nice in the hand. Uh, part of that is because you don't have the scales uh, on the inside and then the kind of letterboxed G10, you have a more comfortable rounding over, uh, rounded over feel to the titanium right there. And they even went and maintained the look of the liners here on the back. You can see on the standard Elementum, you've got the lanyard hole uh, there through the liners and a cutout in the G10 making a little bit of extra room they kind of milled that shape into the solid piece of titanium that you get on the new Wii version. Really cool, feels really good. I like it as an upgrade and they're available now. And then last but not least, something I like even better is the new Beacon Flipper. It's a little bit larger, uh, it's a little bit cleaner than a lot of, you know, historically at least, a lot of the Wii designs have tended to be. Part of that could be maybe they're looking at the success of some things like the Elementum, which is pretty much Civivi's highest selling model. And maybe they're translating a little bit of that cleanliness and intention of design onto the Wii side of things. I'm not speaking authoritatively, it's you know, speculatively, but I really like the results of what I think is happening with this knife. Uh, bigger than the Elementum, three and a half inches about 200 bucks for this particular titanium version, blue stone wash in this case. 20 CV steel, nice clean blade profile. Uh, again, with a uh, almost full flat grind, you do have a fuller right there to spice things up visually a little bit. You got a very useful and usable blade and handle to boot. Titanium, like I said, you've got a similar kind of rounded feel, actually a little bit less rounded, a little more uh, chamfered over, but still very comfortable. I like it. Titanium clip, anodized the same blue, reversible, ball bearings in the pivot, flipping action is good to go. It's awesome. If this is a portent of some of the things to come from Wii uh, at this point, uh, if they're kind of making things that I don't know. I don't want to. I don't want them to ever lose some of the kind of fanciful, imaginative things that put them on the map. But the more premium made usable knives that don't look like just another thing out there on the market, I think the better off we all are. That's it for today. I said it was going to be a little bit shorter. Hope you enjoyed these guys. If you want to get your hands on any of them, we'll leave links in the description below to take you over to KnifeCenter.com. Make sure you sign up for our Knife Rewards program, of course, because if you're going to spend your money on one of these knives, you might as well earn some free money to spend on your next one. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center, signing off. Hopefully my audio was a little bit better this time around. Sorry, guys. Thomas, is it any better? He's not here. Maybe he'll, uh, he'll put a little thing up and let you know. Anyway, guys, that's all for now. See you next time.